hope you all had a wonderful week. Welcome to another episode of Infisco. I'm your host, Hannah Kim. We are back again this week with the latest from the IT and science worlds. Let's first start off with super fast gigabyte internet capable of transmitting large files in a blink of an eye. Until now, those living in remote areas have had to settle for slower speeds due to a lack of access to fiber optic networks, but soon even they will have access to fast speed internet. Let's find out more in Briefing Scope. The National Radio Research Agency announced that it will modify relevant standards to make way for GDSL or Gigaclass Digital Subscriber Line. This technology will allow for internet speeds that are three times faster than the current technology, even through phone lines in areas that cannot access fiber optic networks. Korean researchers have succeeded in using adult stem cells to regenerate lung tissue. They were also the first in Korea to use adult stem cells to culture multicellular aggregates, the lowest unit of tissues. Researchers stated that this study confirmed the possibility of developing treatments at the tissue level for organs. A new observatory capable of measuring how far an orbiting satellite is from Earth has opened near the summit of Cheonwarsan Mountain in Sejong. This observatory utilizes satellite laser ranging which gives precise measurements down to the millimeter and it houses a telescope with a diameter of 40 centimeters. This observatory will be used to decide on the exact orbit of satellites and other scientific research. Korean researchers have uncovered that the pink color of flamingos is attributed to a group of microorganisms called archaea, which exist in extreme environments. The researchers have confirmed for the first time ever that the feathers of the flamingos and the carotenoids, or naturally occurring pigments of archaea, are partially congruent, presenting a link between flamingo feathers and the archaea. Korean researchers have uncovered that the pink color of flamingos is attributed to a group of microorganisms called archaea, which exists in extreme environments. So there is a connection between flamingo feathers and microorganisms. That is certainly new, and there is definitely more than meets the eye. On the topic of the eye, the human eye can be an indicator of how a person feels. Depending on the emotions, the pupil can dilate or shrink. Let's find out more on Industry Inside. The pupil, located in the middle of the iris, dilates or shrinks depending on the exposure to light. This is what the pupil looks like under normal circumstances. The size of the pupil can change based on emotional responses like stress or fear. The nerves that control the size of the pupil react to emotions, changing the pupil size. Recent research from Austria showed that listening to music can also influence the size of the pupil. Researchers had 60 participants listen to music and found that emotional responses to the music influenced pupil dilation. <laughs> These changes can be used in scientific investigation. Analyzing the changes of the pupil during lie detection tests can further determine the veracity of the statements. A person will show various physiological responses depending on the significance of a question or a stimulus. Just like the heart rate, the pupillary response is one of the functions regulated by the autonomic nervous system. In other words, the pupil cannot be controlled voluntarily. Given how honestly pupils respond to emotions, they truly give credence to the expression, eyes are the window to the soul. The doctor is examining the feet of this patient who is standing straight. His feet are curving inward. 
발바닥 부분이 아프거나 그 쪼그려 앉기도 잘안 되고. This sensation of feet curving inward is called pronation, and while some pronation is considered normal, more cases of overpronation are being seen among adolescents. Korean researchers evaluated the feet of 521 teenagers who claim that they don't have any particular feet problems and found that they have pronation tendencies. No precise cause has been stated, but experts believe lack of exercise is a factor. 종아리 근육의 유연성이 떨어짐으로써 이 발이 이차적으로 안쪽으로 무너지는 현상이 올수 있습니다. More severe cases of pronation can result in flat feet or plantar fasciitis, as the tissue connecting the heel bone to the toes gets inflamed. Moreover, the pelvis and the knees can weaken and cause further problems. 발과 종아리의 스트레칭 운동. 대표적으로 제가 추천하는 것은 줄넘기하고 점프가 많이 들어가 있는 운동들이 되겠습니다. Increasing physical activity is also important, but so is wearing shoes that fit the size and shape of the wearer's feet. These colorful dots look like shooting stars in the night sky. They are actually nerve cells in the brain of a mouse. Scientists inserted fluorescent particles into a newly formed embryo in the uterus of a mouse and took visual images of the nerve cells in the cerebral cortex of the embryo. This rainbow-colored leaf-shaped venous image shows the development of a five-day-old mouse's veins in the retina. The green retina blood vessels and the red vascular endothelial cells create a mosaic-like image. This animal cell, as seen through a fluorescence microscope, looks like jigsaw puzzle pieces, while the graphene pattern look like leaves. These beautiful and extraordinary images were captured with an electron microscope and other tools. Our scientists have been working on the development of beautiful and beautiful images for the animal and the animal. The microscopic world cannot be seen with the naked eye. These scientific phenomena, such as the shooting stars in the brain and the rainbows in the eyes, present not only new facts, but also the art of science. These medical residents are practicing surgery for colorectal cancer, not in an operating room, but in a classroom, and not with scalpels, but with a virtual reality equipment. As a three-dimensional view changes depending on their movements, it really is as if they were in the operating room. 실제로 수술을 이제 참여하고 이럴 때 이제 그 현장의 분위기를 이제 많이 전달받고 이런 게 되게 중요한데 어, 그런 수술장의 분위기를 아주 잘 이제 집약할 수 있는 그런 좋은 도구인 것 같습니다. Delicate operations are an essential part of on-site training. However, only a limited number of students can actually be in the operating room. By contrast, they can examine operations in virtual reality with just a smartphone, no matter where they are. As the actual operating theater has been recorded with a 360-degree camera and turned into a three-dimensional video, viewers can observe the entire operation from start to end. The medical field is making many strides with the integration of IT. This virtual reality system will be used not only in surgery, but also in other departments like gynecology and orthopedics. Until now, virtual reality was something that was associated with entertainment and video games, but it has tremendous potential in the medical field as well. Now, speaking of the medical field, there is a sub-miniature LED equipment that can control pain. Let's find out more in Tech Peak. A green light is visible on the rear end of a running mouse. It's coming from a sub-miniature LED bulb that is smaller than a fingernail and soft like biological tissue. This LED can control pain reaction in the mouse. First, specific genes that are involved in pain reception are manipulated so that they react to light. Following that, the LED is implanted and switched on wirelessly, activating the nerve cells. Researchers set up two rooms. One will activate the LED and trigger pain in the mouse, while the other room will keep the LED off. 
The mouse was placed in an environment where it had to select a room, and it eventually selected the room where the LED was off, so that it wouldn't feel pain. This research can be applied to situations where light can be used to trigger nerves in the brain to release certain hormones or reduce pain. The results of this research, conducted by a team that was led by a Korean scientist, were published in the scientific journal Nature Biotechnology. Poplar trees are known for their resilience against cold and fast growth. However, while most poplar trees are green, the one on the right is red from the leaves to the roots. This is the world's first red poplar tree developed by Korean researchers. The tree is red because of an antioxidant and a pigment called anthocyanin that has anti-aging properties. The researchers used genetic materials from a male flower of the poplar tree to create a red poplar tree which produces a significant amount of anthocyanin in the stems and leaves. Researchers stated that as poplar trees have high growth rates, their red leaves can mass produce anthocyanin. 저희가 만든 붉은색 포플러는 연중 붉은색 잎을 띠기 때문에 안토시아닌을 공급할 수가 있고요. 이렇게 공급된 안토시아닌은 산업적으로 이용될 수 있는 원료를 제공할 수 있습니다. The red poplar tree has 20% more anthocyanin than blueberries, and researchers stated that this technology can be applied to other trees for landscaping purposes. The average life expectancy in Korea is 81 years, but the average health span in Korea is 71 years, meaning that the average Korean would suffer due to diseases for 10 years. Is there a way to predict or extend a person's health span? A joint research team for Korea's Institute for Basic Science and Princeton University has gained a hint from roundworms. Researchers did a test on roundworms that is normally done on the elderly to measure their lower body strength and evaluate their health. Maximum velocity cannot recover once it begins to decrease. Researchers found out that roundworms with a faster maximum velocity live 35% longer than roundworms with a slower maximum velocity. This method can predict the remainder of the roundworm's health span. Researchers also confirmed that the aging genes in roundworms can extend the health span. Researchers predict that since roundworms and humans have similar genetic properties, it is possible to find genes that are responsible for aging in humans and develop a substance that can control such genes. This can be the key to not merely living longer, but living a longer and healthy life. As we grow older, health becomes a bigger priority, but who knew that roundworms would be helping our aging population? Perhaps in the future, other unlikely substances like roundworms will help us maintain our health. Now this concludes today's episode of Infoscope. We hope that today's episode has given you some useful information. We will see you all next week. Stay healthy and stay happy. Goodbye, everyone.